Okay, so I had to redo this taste test part. I had to shut the camera off and redo it. So let's pick another pepper and get a nice ripe one back here. Very productive plant too, by the way. I'm very pleased with the explosive ember. This is a beautiful ornamental, by the way. If you want to grow something in the front of your house, and you, this plant will get bigger if you grow it in direct sunlight, you know, with other plants not crowding it out. This plant will grow very nicely. So let's uh, pick another one. Sorry about the noise in the background. They're, they're, they're paving or something. All right, so here it is. And uh, it's a beautiful little purplish type of cap on it. I want to show you that cap. Best light angle for you. It's a beautiful little pepper here. So they do go from a purple color, as you can see. They do go from a purple to like a light bone purplish, and then they turn orange, and eventually nice and red like this. So let's turn you around and give it a taste test. All right, guys, here we are. We are doing an official taste test on this pepper right here. And this is called the Explosive Ember. It's an ornamental pepper, but... A lot of people will grow this for cooking and everything too, and you can, you can use it in cooking. But it's generally grown as an ornamental pepper because they're very small and a lot of people don't want to fuss around with small peppers. But some of you guys who make hot sauces out there, you may want to fool around with adding this as, you know, your own little secret ingredient to your recipe. You know, your own proprietary recipe, if you will. So. That might give you that special edge on that flavor that you're looking for, but let's uh, let's give that a go. See what it tastes like. Not bad at all, to be honest with you. Um, Flavor-wise, it's not habanero flavor. It's not a manzano or pubescent flavor. It's not green bell pepper. So the only other flavor ranges you start to kind of go into major flavor ranges would be the cayenne type flavor so this is kind of starting to fall into that flavor zone i'm not saying it tastes like a cayenne i'm saying it's not taste what i'm what i am saying is it doesn't taste like habanero doesn't taste like green bell pepper and it doesn't taste like a manzano pepper so it's not in those ranges so you start to fall into that tangy little bit of a uh, cayenne world so it kind of has that flavor. It was very moist. It was nice and moist. And when I chewed it up, it broke up very quickly. Skins are a little thick, so that kind of tells me that this pepper is probably good for powdering and drying and stuff like that. They probably dry on a plant good. But the flavor was very nice. It was a nice... In fact, I'm going to do another taste test on it. I'm going to grab another one because the flavor on that was actually quite good. Very good, actually. I'm going to grab one that's not so so fully ripe, and we'll get a little less ripe on that one, see if there's any difference in that flavor. But these are nice, man. This is a really nice pepper. It's not too hot either. I'll go over the heat in a second. Let's give it a go. Flavor comes and goes very quickly. It's got a real nice, like a cayenne-type flavor to it. Not exactly like it, like the red typical red canes, not quite like that, but it's nice. A little bit of tanginess to it, very slight sweetness, very good rich cane type pepper flavor that really carries that pepper through. It's very small, so you would need to add quite a few of them to what you're doing. But I'll tell you what, this pepper is nice enough where I could literally eat these things in the garden all day. This is very nice. Heat-wise... The heat on these is very low. I probably would say it's maybe twice as hot as a pepperoncini, if you want to go there. Maybe twice as hot. It's burning around the tip of my tongue. Not really much on the, roo on, on the top of my tongue. Little bit on the roof of the mouth, which is a little strange. Very slightly, though. A little bit warmth going towards the back of the throat a little bit. 
and that's it but it's warmth it's not really even heat really it's just very low scova wise i'd say probably 100 to 200 on the scoville it's you know pepperoncinis are usually around that range maybe 150 with pepperoncinis this is like 200 maybe 250 they probably could get as hot as uh, maybe 300 i wouldn't go too much it's very low heat but it's very nice because it's not very strong it's not overwhelming if you didn't you know eat a big meal like sometimes i eat these peppers on an empty stomach and man they they really put hurting on me very very badly this is very easy for you if you like a very mild type of heat so far this is i'll do one more for you just to see if if it uh gets any hotter pick one more you want me to pick a purple one for you see what the purple ones we tasted we tasted them red, we tasted them in orange, so let's pick a purple one and see what a purple one tastes like. Look at that. Nice and purple, let's see what that tastes like. Not that good that way. Very mild in flavor, almost no heat at all. It's nice, it wasn't bad, it's just there's almost no flavor on it skin wasn't as thick and hard on it so it did chew up pretty good but you're eating such a small pepper it's i wouldn't even the flavor that was too mild to even there was almost nothing in it you really got to wait till these ripen if you want any kind of flavor you can eat them very low heat if that thing had any heat at all it was so low i could barely detect it you got to let them ripen so they get a little bit of warmth and they start to get juicy and you get a really good flavor out of those and that flavor kind of comes and goes relatively pretty quick the heat does last because my mouth is still kind of warm from it so it is lasting but it's not hurting at all this is very very this is very easy for people who are sensitive to hot peppers you could probably eat these things all day you grow a few of those in the front of your house and every day before you make your salad you go out and you pick a handful of them you could just you don't need to chop them up. You just break them off the the cap, the calyx, to separate them from that. And just throw a handful of those in your salad. That would make a nice little addition to your cooking. So I like these a lot. Explosive Ember is definitely a highly recommended species or pepper plant to grow for ornamental purposes as well as eating them. So that's it. That's just a quick review on the Explosive Embers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.